Okay, folks, this is the Mink. I'm going to be showing you some of the external external uh, features of the Mink. If you can see right here, the teeth. Those are obviously that of a predator, making this a uh, carnivore. Um, you also see I don't know if you can see, but on the eye right here, they have this uh, uh, nictating membrane, and that nictating membrane uh, allows them to be able to see underwater more clearly, and it moves laterally as opposed to ours, which move uh, sort of superiorly and inferiorly. Uh, next, you have the pinnae. The pinnae are the ears, and they've been removed. Um, during the skinning process, you can see they've sort of been cut off. Um, also, you have the uh, whiskers right here, which are known as uh, vibrissae. Okay, you might not see these on yours, but there's a few. These help them, they're sensory organs, they help them see or feel. Um, we also have uh, the nares which are the nostrils. And again, during the skinning process, you've lost some of the, uh, some, well, what it would look like. But obviously their sense of smell is what they need to rely on as they hunt at night. And one thing I did not mention is the, in the eye, you also have a reflective layer. Um, it's called a ta tapetum lucidum, which is actually behind the um, retina and that acts like a, the back of a flashlight reflecting all the light so they can see their prey at night as they hunt during that time. Stop recording. Okay folks so things I forgot to mention here are what makes it class mammalia? What makes it a mammal? Um, if you could see this before it was skinned, you would see eight uh, mammae here, which are basically the uh, milk secreting organs. Um, and you would see uh, four pairs of them. And they uh, also will be present on the male, just not secreting milk. Um, and then the obvious indicator would be, and you can see it here on the tail, uh, is the fur covering. Um, okay. Stop recording. Okay, folks. So one thing that's really important, uh, and you don't want to mess this up, is if you flip your mink so that it's uh, ventral side down, it's belly down, you'll see at the caudal end, the end near the tail, you have these um, anal glands, and these glands are supposed to be more potent than uh, skunk glands, and they use them when they are perturbed. So you do not want to puncture these, okay? Uh, just leave them alone at the time being. Um, if we are going to remove them, we will remove them under a fume hood, and I may have to do that for you, okay? Stop recording. Okay, uh, next step in opening up your mink is you want to make some cuts. So the, the best thing to do is actually to use your scalpel, okay, and you want to cut uh, a line right down the midline. You're not trying to cut too much. So if I put the mink back together, you can see you just kind of want to drag the scalpel lightly and then you can go over it again, obviously, because you're cutting through the muscle tissue and you want to expose the abdominal cavity, obviously, as you see here. And this is a little tougher. First, I cut through the muscle again, right? So the pectoralis major up here, cut through that. And then what happens is you'll see a little bit more muscle right along the 
rib cage. So then you need to use your scissors. And when you use your scissors, you're actually going to be cutting through ribs. So you can actually feel, right? You see these little white uh, knobs here. Those are the ends of the ribs. And when you open up that, you actually can see the thoracic uh, cavity. So you'll see things like the liver, which actually encloses or I'm sorry, the lungs, which actually encloses sort of everything else. The liver is right down here. That's sort of the, uh, the most uh, anterior portion of the abdominal cavity. So again, the two things you're looking for is to expose your, the thoracic uh, cavity up top here and the abdominal cavity down below. Now, when you cut through all this, you're going to need to make some lateral cuts. So I just use my scissors to make these two lateral cuts here, and I'll make the other one over here. Okay, be careful not to cut through any of those other organs. And then you can see here, actually, what separates the two is uh, the diaphragm. And you can see that here. There's the diaphragm. Okay, and then we can work on, once you do that, I'm going to cut out the diaphragm. Or not completely, but just cut around it. Again, you want to do this with care. We're not rushing. Okay, so if you do that, you can actually then, if you'd like, you can use some pins. And you can pin this open right down to the wax. So you can pin just like that. This might be a little trickier to pin, but you can definitely hold it open. Okay, so once you've opened up your abdominal cavity and you can pin it open with, these, with four pins here, what you wanna do is you want to examine, again, the lobes of the liver here, okay? You can see they're this dark brown, uh, sort of reddish color. And again, they're the most um, anterior, they're closest actually to the head in this case, right? Of the abdominal cavity, right below the diaphragm, which I've already sort of cut here, okay? Um, what you wanna do is you wanna lift that up, and they call it reflecting it. If you reflect the liver here, you'll be able to find right below it the beginning of the digestive tract in the abdominal cavity. So you have the stomach right here, which is this J-shaped um, organ in us, sort of J-shaped here, you can see. And we're going to open that up um, probably later. What you can do is you can actually trace it. You can actually take your uh, fingers and you can actually move along and I will show you the whole thing in a second but right over all of it is this fatty apron okay it's called the greater omentum the greater omentum has uh, adipose tissue you can see all this fat covering everything and what it does is it keeps all of your organs in place and it keeps it stuck to the walls of the abdominal cavity okay so uh, if you lift that up, you can see it's like the aprons that we're wearing, just sort of grosser. <laughs> and what you can do is you can move that to the side, and what you'll see underneath is the digestive tract. You'll see all of the small intestine. So again, you want to find the stomach, and you want to move along. It curves up, and then it comes, follow, you can just follow it around. You can see there's a lot of it. Okay, and you can just keep putting your thumb and four fingers and you can see it is very long. And actually what we'll do later is we'll separate it and you can see, you can actually measure its length. Okay, so curving this and winding it is actually um, gives it more surface area which helps you with digestion. You can do more digestion in a smaller area without having to be elongated. So you can see, I'm just tracing it all the way. And then you'll see uh, it move towards the colon and then the uh, rectum there at the end. Um, so you can kind of put that back in place. Okay.